Well guys, the subject I'm gonna be teaching you here today isn't necessarily rocket science, but this is one of the more complicated subjects I will ever teach on the channel. Most of you guys have never heard about the things I'm gonna teach you in this video here today, and if you have heard of them, you might not understand them well. A very small percentage of you guys know exactly what I'm gonna be talking about before I explain all this in depth, okay? So I'm gonna take my time with this video. This isn't like some rush through five, 10 minute video. This is probably gonna end up being like a 30 minute video, okay? And I think this is a perfect opportunity to do this because today I'm teaching you exactly how to make money from Tesla stock regardless if it goes down a bunch in the short term or continues to go a lot higher, okay? This is a perfect stock because I would say about half of my subscribers own at least one share of Tesla, okay? About 50% of you guys that watch my channel probably own at least one share of Tesla and I would say probably about 10% of you guys actually have 50% or more of your net worth in Tesla stock. And first off, let me just say you need to be diversified. I love Tesla stock just as much, if not more than just about anybody out there, but uh, I would never put my entire net worth or close to my entire net worth in any stock. Diversity is a beautiful, beautiful thing because you never know. Your bullish thesis might not work out on a stock, so it's always good to be diversified, but I know some of you guys have a, you know, a significant portion of your wealth in it, okay? No, I, I got a lot of Tesla shares, I'm gonna be honest, I do. Uh, and one in the public, account alone, I have 150 Tesla shares. In one of my private accounts, I have 113 Tesla shares, and then I have some more Tesla shares in a couple smaller accounts. One has 15 Tesla shares, one has 11 Tesla shares. Uh, so obviously, Tesla's a big position for me. And then on top of that, my wife owns a ton of Tesla stock as well, okay? So, I mean, you know, uh, Tesla stock is pretty self-explanatory in terms of the momentum the stock has carried. You go back to June 2019, what was that, seven months ago or something like that, right? The stock was under $200 a share. It was like 180 bucks and I mean since that time it has just roared like like you know a stock we haven't seen in a while and I mean look at since November the move just since November has been absolutely incredible here today the stock's trading above $560 a share okay so it's been it's been absolutely amazing a ton of you guys are investing in it and that's great okay but today I'm gonna teach you how to hedge a position, how to hedge a position. And what I'm gonna teach you in regards to today is actually in regards to Tesla stock and how to hedge a position in regards to Tesla stock. But what I'm gonna teach you today can actually be applied on any stocks you own in the future. So it's not like what I'm teaching you here today can just be applied to Tesla stock. This can be applied to any stocks you own in the future, okay? And is this you? You gotta ask yourself, is this you, okay? One, you don't want to sell the stock you're holding right now, okay? And you know, obviously today's video is in reference to Tesla stock. So maybe you're in a situation where you own, you know, a, a significant portion of Tesla shares, you are probably up a lot on those shares and you don't want to take profits because you still believe in this company a lot for the long term. You think it has a potential to be a thousand dollar stock in the future or two thousand dollar stock or whatever your bullish thesis is. So you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to take profits in this. I don't want to sell out of this stock. I want to be in this for the next three years, five years, seven years. That's that's great and that's definitely someone like myself. Most of the time if I'm in a stock and it goes up 100%, 200%, I'm starting to sell out the shares but not with Tesla stock, it's a little different, okay? But the second thing is, are you afraid it's gonna pull back short term? You might be afraid that, you know, this, this has been an incredible run but we have seen many, many times with a lot of these stocks, it, it doesn't just go up forever and eventually you end up seeing a big pullback in a stock. You know, in a, in a case like Tesla, it's moved up so much so fast that maybe the momentum momentum ends up drying up short term and maybe it makes a big move down. And so some people feel like that might happen, but they're like, I'm not gonna sell out of my position just because that might happen, okay? So in a situation like that, a hedge comes into play, okay? A hedge can allow you to make some money from a stock whether it goes up or whether it goes down, okay? That's what a hedge is. It can allow you to make money either way, all right? A proper hedge allows a bullish person, in this case, you might be bullish on Tesla stock, to quote, save face or save money potentially. So imagine for a moment you're in the stock market, okay? Most people know you can go long a stock, which means you buy a stock. So you buy Tesla stock and your hope is that over the coming months, the coming years, that stock price goes up and someday you can sell all those shares and get a lot more than what you paid 
for them. Most people know that, and then if they know another thing about the stock market, they know you can short sell a stock, which essentially you're doing the inverse going long. You're placing a bet that over time, that stock price and that company will go down. And so most people in the stock market know of those two things, but we're involving something a little different today, okay? Now to give you an illustration so a lot of you guys can understand, okay, the city I live in, this is Las Vegas, Nevada, okay? This is, uh, well, I can't really call it the uh, gambling capital of the world because that's technically Macau, but after Macau, it's pretty much the gambling capital of the world, right? And we have, you know, huge sports books here where you can place bets on sporting events. And if you think a team's gonna win or you think a team's gonna score a ton of points or something like that, you can go make all these different bets, all right? Now we have the Super Bowl coming up here on February 2nd. Super Bowl, you know, the biggest sporting event in the United States of America. And it's just a huge worldwide event. Everybody just, you know, sits around their TV, regardless if they care about the NFL or not. Most people just sit around and, you know, barbecue and, and have a good time. So we have the San Francisco 49ers playing the Kansas City Chiefs, all right? Now, if you're a big sports better, you usually bet the favorites in most situations, okay? So let's say the Chiefs are, are, are you know, favorites in this situation, okay? So a big sports better, they might say, you know what, I'm gonna bet the Chiefs to win straight up, and that's where I'm gonna put the majority of this bet, okay? So let's say they're willing to risk $100,000. So let's say, I want the Chiefs straight up, I want $100,000 in this, okay? But if they're looking to head their bet because keep in mind the Chiefs might not win they might do something like this they might place a small amount of money on what's called a parlay which if you do two things on a parlay you get paid out more money and you get to place a smaller bet okay so they might place a parlay bet on the Niners and under figuring well if the game's a very high scoring game the Chiefs are probably gonna win that game most people would say if the Niners win that game it's probably gonna be a low scoring game it's probably gonna be a slugfest and it's probably gonna be a defensive type game so that would make sense to make that bet, but if it's a super high scoring game that would go over, likely it would go to the Chiefs, okay? So in that situation, that makes sense. So if we're trying to apply something like that to the stock market and specifically with Tesla stock, okay? So this is what somebody might want to do in a similar situation with Tesla stock, okay? So Tesla stock is their long play. That's their main play. That's like that, that sports better that bets super heavy on the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, right? That's that guy that's betting you know, really heavy that Tesla is going to be a lot bigger company in the future and they got most of their marbles over there on Tesla stock, okay? But they want to also be able to make out and save some face in case they are wrong, especially in the short term. So you need to place a small bet as something to save face, okay? Now, if you're doing something like a straight long and a straight short, that doesn't make sense, okay? So imagine you just go long Tesla shares and also you short Tesla shares. That doesn't make any sense for our situation. You just aren't getting good risk reward there, and especially considering you have to pay interest whenever you short a position, like the whole thing just doesn't make sense. To do a straight long or straight short, to, to go back to our sports betting example, that would be like you know placing money on the 49ers to win straight up and placing money on the on the Kansas City Chiefs to win straight up like that whole scenario that just that just doesn't make sense okay so the big sports better why did they place that parlay on the Niners and under well because that would pay a lot more money than if they did those bets separately okay and how we can take advantage of something like that in the stock market is actually through what's called the options market okay there are many many different option strategies out there. I teach a whole bunch of different option strategies uh, in my private stock group, which by the way, I would say if you're newer to the stock market, you know, don't really mess around with options too much because usually people lose a lot of money in the options market. I'm just going to be completely honest because they place a lot of risky bets. Like they'll straight up buy calls in a stock. They'll straight up buy puts and it's not coming from a hedge perspective. The options market can be phenomenal for hedging big positions, whether you're short stocks or long stocks. Using the options market as a hedge and things like that can definitely be a good thing. But that's not how most people use the options market. Most people use the options market by doing things like selling naked calls, selling naked puts, or just buying straight up call options or buying straight up put options with nothing underlying. And that's how most people go in the options market and they make a lot of mistakes, okay? Now we have
have an event coming up that should be very, very interesting for Tesla stock. Tesla's Q4 2019 earnings are going to be coming out January 29th, 2020. So that is here in about a week from now. Okay. Now, keep in mind, most times when a stock has been really, really, really hot, which, you know, Tesla's been absolutely on fire. And I mean, it's been amazing, the stock price for the last few months. Whenever you see a stock price like that going up and going up, Think about it in terms of the next earnings, they really need to be a 10 out of 10. They need to be the definition of perfect, okay? Tesla, I mean, in order for the stock to keep momentum, the earnings have to be unbelievable, like world beater type earnings for that stock to continue to go up. And what I see a ton of times in the stock market, and this happens a ton for like beginners, I'll see it in the Discord chat, in my private stock group and whatnot, you know, a company that somebody owns, they'll beat earnings really nicely, EPS, revenue, and yet the stock price will fall and they're like, why the heck did the stock price fall? They beat their earnings. And a lot of times it's because that stock has already moved up a ton. So it has priced in really, really good earnings already. So in order to keep that stock's momentum going, this earnings has to be so ridiculously amazing that all the Wall Street's like, oh my gosh, things are even, 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 even better than what the stock price is saying. And we got to get in that. So you need a 10 out of 10 situation. And there are very few earnings that actually come out that are, you know, true 10 out of 10s, okay? So in this scenario, it might make sense to buy a little bit of short-term put options, something that expires around, let's say, February 7th, 2020. So what you're looking at here is whenever you're buying like, you know, options in general, you're basically placing a bet that a stock price could go to a certain price by a certain date. And since this would be a kind of a short term play to hopefully save face in case the stock price went down a ton and you already have a big position in the stock, this is a short term play on that. Okay. Now you could go super out of the money, which is like, you could do like a 280 $85 strike, which is essentially placing a bet that the stock price would go down around $285 or lower, you could get those for like pennies. And sure, I mean, if that happened, you can make so much money, it's disgusting. But how realistic is that? It's insanely unrealistic. Even if you look at something like a $300 strike, which is, you know, essentially is placing a bet that the stock price could go down to $300 or lower. You could pick up something like that for like, let's say 30 cents, extremely low priced options. But what are the chances that Tesla stock would go down to $300 a share or lower by February 7th of 2020, especially when the stock's well over $500, it's extremely rare. So those options, although they might look cool, they're super underdog options and they're super, super, super unrealistic that that could even happen. So those aren't really the type of options we're looking at if we're trying to hedge a position here, okay? We gotta get something that's somewhat realistic that that could actually maybe potentially happen, okay? So something that might be interesting is say, let's look at like, like something like a $480 strike. For something like that, you have to pay about $10 an option for those, or what's known as $10 of premium per options contract, okay? So that's placing a bet, essentially, that the stock's going to go lower than $480. The stock right now is with something around $560. So we're talking about definitely in the realm of possibility, especially when you look at the stock chart for Tesla. The stock was just at $480 or lower, like literally like two weeks ago. So to say the stock could go down to those levels or maybe even lower is, is definitely in the realm of possibility. I mean, look at the stock. It was $400. If you go back a month ago, the stock was around 400 bucks a share. It's just absolutely been amazing how much the stock has gone up. So let me go ahead on the whiteboard now. I'm going to write some things out and explain exactly how this bet works and how to do it. Alrighty guys, now that we have the context on how this all works, let's go through the concrete numbers in a concrete example here. And let me explain exactly how this works into detail, okay? So let's say there's a guy here, his name is J-Dog for instance, okay? J-Dog owns $100,000 of Tesla stock, okay? He's got a pretty big position in the stock. He owns $100,000 worth of Tesla stock. Now let's say J-Dog thinks the stock price is gonna fall short term, okay? Keep in mind, this is a short term play in terms of J-Dog worrying up the stock. Obviously, if he was worried about the stock falling long term, it doesn't make sense to be in the stock long term, okay? But J-Dog thinks for whatever reason, the stock price 
price is going to go down short term. Maybe he thinks bad earnings are going to come out, something that misses. Maybe he thinks the stock price has gone up too much, it's due to fall. Maybe he thinks the entire stock market is due to have a big pullback and that will pull down his stock in this, in this situation would be Tesla stock. Okay, Whatever J-Dog's you know, like short term hypothesis is around the stock, that why he thinks the stock's going to fall, he thinks it's going to fall, but he doesn't want to sell out of his shares. Because here's the problem if you sell out of your shares and your J-Dog. Let's say you sell out of all $100,000 just because the stock might go down and you feel it might go down short term. If you're wrong in this scenario, it ends up being a disaster because what if that Tesla stock climbs to 600, then 700, then 800? J-Dog just missed out on a ridiculous amount of upside in a stock that he loved for the long term. And I've seen this happen with a lot of individuals including Tesla stock recently. I've, if I had a, a, a dollar for every time I've seen a message from somebody that sent to me recently, whether through a, like a DM or through the Discord chat or something, that you know Tesla stock climbed to 380 and they were like, oh my gosh, it's gone up so much, I gotta sell out now. Or it went up to 450 and they're like, oh my gosh, this must be the top now. It's gonna go down a bunch, I'm gonna sell out. And now there's been a ton of people that since it climbed to 500 have went ahead and sold out. Now they're, now they're seeing the stock go to 560 and they're like, what the heck? And so so that's the risk and that's why if you're if you're really bullish long term on a stock it's not worth selling out if you're super bullish on that stock long term even if you're let's say 70% confident 80% confident that the stock price will fall short term because you might end up being in a situation where you never get back in that stock. Imagine people that sold out of Amazon stock when Amazon stock went from $200 a share to $400 a share just because they were afraid something might happen short term. And even if they were really confident in that, guess what? Amazon kept climbing. Nowadays, Amazon's an $1,800 or $2,000 stock or whatever. And so they missed out on a ton of long term gains because they sold out of their position short term. So it just doesn't make sense if you're super bullish. On, on a position long term. But for whatever reason, J Dog thinks the stock price is going to fall short term. He doesn't want to sell his Tesla stock, okay? So here's a scenario that J Dog could do, okay? J Dog could go ahead and buy 1% to 3% of his stake. His stake is $100,000, right? in short-term put options to save face here, okay? Now, you might think, well, why not do like 20%? Why not do like $20,000 worth of put options? Because now, if the stock falls huge, you're really gonna make a lot of money, right? And sure, that definitely would be awesome, but keep in mind, in a scenario like this, right? We're playing a $480 strike price, all right? We're paying $10 premium, so $470 is our break even on this. So essentially, if if the stock price, if Tesla stock price, when, this, when these options expire, which we're looking at February 7th, if those options expire, guess what? You just lost $20,000, okay? So that's why it doesn't make sense to do a huge position in put options like that. Remember, we're just trying to save face here, right? We're not trying to kill it if the stock goes down a bunch. We're not trying to like, you know, make a million dollars from this. We're just trying to save some face and still be able to profit whether the stock goes up a bunch here in the short term or whether the stock goes down a bunch in the short term. We're just trying to make money either way. So that's why that doesn't make sense. So usually, if you want to do a play like this, it's one to 3% of whatever position you have in that stock. So here in this scenario, it'd be, let's say, a $1,000 position put options or a $3,000 position in put options, okay? Now keep in mind, 470 is our break even. So let's do some numbers here to kind of show you, you know, what you would make on, on these shares and whatnot. Keep in mind, if this stock's over 480, you lost your full $1,000 if you bought $1,000 worth of put options. And if the stock's over 480, and you bought $3,000 worth of put option, hey, you lost your $3,000, okay? So 470, if the stock price is at $470 come February 7th, 2020, then essentially you get your $1,000 back, okay? You didn't make any money, you didn't lose any money. In this scenario, obviously $3,000, you get your $3,000 back, okay? Woohoo! You didn't make any money, you didn't lose any money, um, you just got your money back essentially, okay? But of course, your long position, as far as that, value went down obviously okay now let's say the stock you know made a pretty decent move you know down you know 90 to 100 dollars a share short term earnings don't come out they don't excite investors or something like that okay so now in this scenario you just 2 x your money okay so you just took that thousand dollars and made it into two thousand dollars now with that money the great thing is you know that's just pure profit in terms of that extra thousand dollars and then you could go ahead and buy more of that stock if it went down a bunch that's a beautiful thing about some of these short-term put options. The huge risk is obviously, if it's not at that price, you lose 100% of whatever you'd put
put into those put options. But the beautiful side is if, if things really go wrong short term and that stock price falls a ton, you could end up making a very big profit and then going ahead and buying those shares for a lot cheaper than you could have previously, okay? So in this scenario where they, you know, the J-Dog had bought $3,000 worth of put options. Now, if that stock price is $460, J-Dog just doubled up his money. So now he has $6,000 and $3,000 of that is pure profit in this scenario. If the stock goes down to $450, then once again, they double up their initial investment, not the total investment, but the initial investment. So now they have $3,000 there and now $2,000 of that is profit. Here in this scenario, $9,000 is now what they have and $6,000 is pure profit. If we go down to 440, now we're talking about $4,000, $3,000, thousand of which is pure profit. In this scenario, now we're talking about total amount of $12,000 9,000 of that is pure profit. And if we're talking about the stock was to really, really fall a lot over the course of the next two weeks, let's go, let's say it goes down to $430, which keep in mind a stock like Tesla stock was at $430 like literally just two or three weeks ago, right? Okay, so let's say that scenario rolls out. Now we're talking about this $1,000 bet ended up turning into a $5,000 bet, 4,000 of which is profit. And this $3,000 bet ended up turning into $15,000 thousand dollars of which twelve thousand dollars is pure profit okay so when you look at this as a as a just an overall idea it can many times make sense if you're really really bearish about a stock short term but you actually really really love that stock long term sometimes this is this is really the best scenario you can possibly do if you're in one of those situations where you have strong conviction on that stock over the long term the company is going to grow a lot but you have a lot of short term pessimism around that stock in this happens sometime in the stock market. It is fully possible. It, not a lot of people, uh, people think, well, if I'm bullish on stock, I just have to be bullish all the time. And that's not how the stock market works. It is perfectly possible for you to be insanely bullish on a stock long term, but actually be bearish on a stock short term for whatever reason. And sometimes it can be a compound of reasons on why you actually feel like that stock you're in is gonna go down in the short term. But to sell out of a stock, to sell out of a stock that you believe has a you know potential to 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X over let's say the next five to 10 years, to sell out of that stock short term completely just because you know something could happen with the stock price short term, it's not an ideal situation and at the same time to just go long and go short, it also doesn't make sense. So if you're trying to get the best of both worlds and really hedge a position, guys, this is really your, your best option, no pun intended, if you're trying to do something like this where you're trying to capitalize if that stock continues to climb or if that stock goes down a bunch. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. What I taught you here in this video could actually be applied to any major positions you have in the future. If you're ever in that scenario where you're actually super bullish on the stock long term, but you're actually kind of bearish on that stock short term, which does happen in the market. This exact scenario can be applied to any stock out there, guys. So I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed me kind of explaining this to you. Options can many times get a bad rap because a lot of you know newbie investors do some super dangerous things, but actually options can make you a safer investor if you know how to hedge properly. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.